Hello, everybody. It's really nice to have you all here. Thank you for joining us. Um, I guess following on from Nisa and Elizabeth Kuzminovska, I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey getting coming here to Nantian. So I grew up in Western Canada, and I found in high school, secondary school, and early in university, uh, I felt quite disconnected. You know, I felt the education that I was quite boring. Um, and, and so when I was in my early 20s, I, I met a few people and I had a couple of subjects at university and it led me to take a trip to India. And I was seeking meditation. I wanted to learn more about meditation because I think what I was missing in my education system, there was nothing that was speaking to my inner world. And as a teenager, I, there were periods where I felt very confused, um, you know, depressed and it, just a lack of meaning. Um, and so I think I was seeking something on the inside. So I went to Buddhism and there I met with the Tibetans and the Tibetan Buddhists, who a you know, large community of Tibetan Buddhists in India, as many of you know. And so I ended up becoming a nun. I took a radical step and I became a Tibetan Buddhist nun in 2000. And then I spent the next 17 years living in Tibetan nunneries and around Tibetan nunneries in India and also on the Tibetan plateau. And so essentially it was my main adult education was in a, a traditional Buddhist pathway and community. And, and for me, I was very fortunate, you know, I was a foreigner to the tradition and, you know, it's a tradition that's kind of a little bit uh, unstable, uh, much of it's in exile in India and around the world. Um, but I learned the language and I, and I studied with, you know, the Tibetan monastic system and, you know, it's not perfect. It's a human community. There's all kinds of, you know, uh, all kinds of dark, un dark underbellies in any human community. But overall, I was very fortunate and I, and I got so much out of it. So it was 17 years for me. And because this tra the, tra the traditional Buddhist education is, is a cultivation of the person. It's not so much just about learning information and ideas you know, through book learning, it's really about, you know, a human cultivation. And Tibetan Buddhism in particular, um, it's as a form of Mahayana Buddhism, it really prizes compassion. So it's almost, it really is the main end goal of their education system. And they really prize human beings that, that demonstrate and embody compassion. So for me, this was very inspiring because it's a living tradition with many mentors, many humans that have walked that pathway. It's also a tradition of more than 2,500 years, roughly speaking. So it's a lineage and along with a very sophisticated psychology and a sophisticated philosophy, Buddhism has these methods, these contemplative methods for the mind to look at itself. And, and that adds a really interesting dimension and it teaches the potential, you know, Elizabeth Kuzmanovka pointed to this, that, you know, in, in often in, in Western psychology, it's mostly looking at what's wrong with the mind, but in Buddhism, it's really pointing to the great potential, to great human potential and all of those incredible qualities of compassion and insight and, and skillful behavior and so on. So for me as a, as a person, as an individual, I think what I got from, um, you know, studying and training with, Tibetan Buddhism, certainly a lot more peace. I think, you know, I still have my bad days, but I have a lot better relationship with myself. And, and it's sometimes sort of hard to, to sum up, but fundamentally just a kind of inspiration for being alive. It, you know, this pathway of human potential and, and a lot of tools, particularly to deal with hardships because life is difficult. Uh, we never know what to expect. So when when hardships happen, I found that it's really given me those tools. But after a, after 17 years of that, then um, I I came back to my home culture in the West. I always planned to do that, and I had felt a little bit homesick. So I studied in academia with postgraduate studies, University of Sydney and other places, and and that was wonderful. It sort of allowed me to bridge and allowed me to look clearly at both my Western heritage of knowledge and at traditional Buddhism. But also like Elizabeth Kosmanovka pointed out, I, I, I do find that in the mainstream Western education, there's a, it becomes constrained, particularly when it's looking at mind science and psychology, it's a little bit constrained by the view of materialism and 
you know, sometimes that mind body dualism. And so for me, Nantian is, is a really interesting space because it has the same high standards of scholarship and, and rigorous intellectual learning as any mainstream university in, in our fields. But it with the contemplative pedagogy and, and the kind of creative space here at Nantian, we're allowed to explore Buddhism and mind-body sciences and psychology and mental health, social well-being. Uh, you know, with, with contemplative pedagogy and ways of knowing that involve the whole person. So it's, it's a very high standard of, of a graduate institute, academically speaking, but it really has heart, really has heart. The knowledge and the values are really aligned here at Nantian. I've just been here for about almost six months now, lecturing in Buddhist studies, and, um, and I'm really happy to be here. I don't think there's any, anywhere else in Australia like it. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Geez, what an incredible quest. Thank you so much for sharing your personal journey with us today. Uh, just one quick question, if you don't mind. How has being a monastic informed your academic work? Um, I think, well, the monastery is, like a Buddhist monastery is, is in many ways quite similar to a, an academic institution, you know, that sort of disciplined learning. So it sort of taught it taught me the discipline of learning. I think you know the subjects would be quite different from a mainstream liberal arts university, for example. But you know the the discipline of you know reading and reflecting and processing and memorizing. There's a lot of memorization, so it kind of just taught me how to learn. I think. Thank you so much. 